The two collaborated to pass the Budget Control Act of 2011 when Biden was vice president. But this time around, McConnell tells me it's up to his fellow Republican, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, to negotiate. Well, you've already got a lot of things working against each other now. You've got a Democratic president, a Democratic Senate, and a Republican-led House that seems confused as to how they're going to work together. You know, we started the day with nine cases left, and people, because of that leak, that unprecedented leak, when Politico published the draft of Alito's majority opinion, people have been out here every single decision day. This is the second time that President Joe Biden has traveled to Kentucky to survey damage from a natural disaster in less than a year. Complaints of mail delivery delays became even louder during the pandemic when more people relied on the Postal Service for the delivery of necessary items. He started off the day with this, calling out Republicans for what he calls a tax on Judge Jackson that happened yesterday in the first day of questioning. He implied that some of the Republicans are using this questioning time to make their bid for higher office. The committee has been focusing heavily on what President Donald Trump did in the weeks leading up to the riot at the Capitol and what he did that day. That commission is going through talks right now. I know that you made headlines recently when you said it will be interesting to reveal all the participants that were involved. Can you expand on that comment? This is the first summit for the leaders of these three nations since a gathering in Canada back in 2016 when Barack Obama was president. There was no such meeting when Donald Trump was in the White House, partly because of his disputes with his Canadian and Mexican counterparts. You've spoken out against career politicians and even helped co-sponsor legislation to put term limits into place. Do you consider yourself a career politician at this point? You are the only Democrat in this delegation, in both the House and the Senate. What is your advice to them in working with people that they probably don't agree with on a lot of issues. Independent of these federal charges, a separate team from the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division is conducting a civil investigation. Well, this is my first time out here at Churchill Downs, and before making the trip to Kentucky, I had the chance to speak with a few members of the Kentucky delegation about what the Kentucky Derby means for the state. There's actually another member of the House who began serving the same day Rogers did, Republican Chris Smith of New Jersey. But when two members enter Congress on the same day, seniority is determined alphabetically. And of course, R comes just before S. Minority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky was taken to the hospital late Wednesday night after falling at a private event. Thursday afternoon, McConnell's office revealed that he had suffered a concussion, adding, quote, he is expected to remain in the hospital for a few days of observation and treatment. The 81-year-old McConnell was with other Republicans at a fundraiser for the Senate Leadership Fund at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel when he tripped and fell. Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio said that he was there as well, but did not see what happened. I saw, saw the leader last night, certainly praying and hoping for his recovery. I sent him a message, and we're certainly hoping he does better. McConnell's health was a frequent topic of conversation on Capitol Hill Thursday, with members of both parties sending their best. We wish him a speedy recovery, and hopefully it's not serious, but I don't know any of the details. I called the leader this morning and spoke briefly with his staff to extend my prayers and well wishes. My thoughts are also with Leader McConnell's family and his team. McConnell battled polio when he was a young child and has acknowledged some difficulty in adulthood climbing stairs. In 2019, McConnell tripped in his Kentucky home and suffered a shoulder fracture. The age and health of politicians, and especially senators, has been in the spotlight recently. The oldest senator, 89-year-old Democrat Dianne Feinstein of California, was recently released from the hospital after seeking care for shingles. Republican Charles Grassley of Iowa, who is also 89, broke his hip. And Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania suffered a stroke during his campaign last year and was recently hospitalized for clinical depression. Just a couple of days ago, I sat down with McConnell to discuss a variety of topics, including Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley's proposal that will require politicians over the age of 75 to take a mental competency test. I asked McConnell about this in relation to the 2024 presidential election. He responded in a lighthearted way. Biden is 80, you're 81. How do you feel about that proposal? Well, I think Lindsey Graham probably had the best quip. He said anybody running for president ought to have to take a competency test regardless of age. 
At the beginning of this term, McConnell became the longest serving Senate leader in the history of Congress. He's up for re-election in Kentucky in 2026. In Washington, Julia Benbrook, Spectrum News. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, began working for the government in 1968 when Lyndon B. Johnson was president. Now, after 54 sometimes tumultuous years, he'll step down at the end of the month. Every day for all of those years, I've given it everything that I have, and I've never left anything on the field. For the last 38 years, Fauci has been the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. In that capacity, one of the things I did was to develop a very robust AIDS program, which in collaboration with the pharmaceutical companies have developed most of the drugs that have now been used to be life-saving combinations of drugs for people who are living with HIV. That has saved millions of lives. The Brooklyn-born Fauci has advised seven presidents, both Democrat and Republican, on health policy. He lists working with President George W. Bush on an emergency plan for AIDS relief among his proudest accomplishments. In 2008, Bush presented Fauci with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It's been a very, very long haul, but there have been phases during those decades that things were done not alone with a lot of help from a lot of very good people that I feel very good about. Although Fauci has been with the government for decades, most Americans only became familiar with him in 2020 when the coronavirus crisis erupted. Fauci regularly stood at the White House podium giving guidance to Americans on how to navigate the outbreak. Faced with a rapidly spreading and dangerous virus, Fauci and other public health officials recommended Americans take significant steps like wearing masks and limiting the size of public gatherings. Those changes impacted everyday life and played a role in a massive economic disruption. Some Republican lawmakers have criticized his guidance, but Fauci says it saved lives. I don't belong in any affiliation to any party and I stay away from politics and stay with science, the people who want to politicize science have politicized science. I have not politicized what I've done. Some Republican politicians, notably Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, are questioning how the COVID-19 pandemic began. Some suggesting the virus leaked from a lab in China three years ago and accusing Fauci's team of funding research there. Members of Paul's party have indicated they'll subpoena the disease expert when Republicans gain control of the House in 2023. Fauci said he would cooperate fully. We can defend and explain and stand by everything that we've said, so I have nothing to hide. Stepping down from government work doesn't mean he plans to slow down. Want to comment on what's next? You know, I don't know, to be honest with you, because um, as a government employee, particularly at my, uh, uh, someone is at my level being an advisor to the president, it is not appropriate for me to negotiate what I'm going to be doing after I leave government. Fauci says that although he's not positive about the next step, he is positive that it will not involve politics. I want to continue in the public arena. I want to be writing and lecturing about public health issues, about global health issues, perhaps inspiring younger people to get involved in public service. Speaking at his final White House press briefing before stepping away from his post, Fauci urged Americans to get their updated COVID-19 shots as soon as they are eligible. People can visit vaccines.gov to find a location. In Washington, Julia Benbrook, Spectrum News. This is the second time that President Joe Biden has traveled to Kentucky in less than a year to survey damage from a natural disaster. In December, Western Kentucky experienced deadly tornadoes that killed 77 people there. This time, flooding in Eastern Kentucky has killed more than three dozen people with two people still missing. It is true that the people here in this community in Western Kentucky and the folks I met in the tornado they're not just Kentuckians, they're Americans. They're Americans. This happened in America. American problem. And we're all Americans. Everybody has an obligation to help. Biden was joined by Democratic Governor Andy Bashir and Republican Congressman Hal Rogers, who represents Eastern Kentucky in Congress. Both thanked Biden for his swift action on approving a federal disaster declaration for the counties impacted. We're grateful 
for the president for a number of things. First, one of the fastest disaster declarations we've ever seen. The congressman and I were talking it might be the fastest. The group with the president visited people in the area who lost their homes in the storms and are working to recover. People like Phyllis Bush, who spoke with the president today. This was our house. That's where we were living, this old house here. Uh, the water just came so quickly, just up to her knees, and they came and got us in a boat. Her husband, Willie, said it was difficult to do an interview because he lost his hearing aids in the storm. During his speech today, Biden promised to continue to advocate for the people here and said that he would be back to check on the progress. In eastern Kentucky, Julia Benbrook, Spectrum News.